Welcome everybody, Aubrainium here to talk you through this speed run of the early access game Timberborn. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a city builder game where your citizens are beavers. They must grow and harvest food, manage water and other natural resources during a wet and dry season. Uh, generally, they build everything in the game. There's a lot to cover here, so let's dive right in. Here we adopt a somewhat standard approach to speedruns. We'll use the defaults all players see when they first install the game. We use the Plains map on normal difficulty with the Foxtail faction. And with that, we begin. I've given this settlement the name Rabbit Alley, which sounds like a place gophers go to buy crystal meth. Maybe you could say there's something special in the chestnuts? Our first goal is to pause the game and build out the framework for paths and basic needs for our tweaker beavers. Start things off with some strategically placed gathering posts for lumber and berries. We'll need a fair bit of power to run the early game plank and gear manufacturing, so the section due south of the district center is used for the low power industrial zone. We'll build several key industrial buildings here later. For now, it's a water wheel and a lumber mill. We also need a farmhouse to begin planting crops. We build the inventor hut early as well. Science will be a limited resource on our way to our goal of building the ingenuity monument. With a water pump and a small storage, we can get started and unpause the game. Once we have the basics planned out, we can aim for our next task of tree planting. We need a lot of logs to get the dam built, and a whole lot more after that. Having a dam prevents water from draining out of the settlement within hours of the start of the dry season. Without water, beavers won't last more than a day. There's a chance we could collect enough water into storage tanks to last the first dry season, but we'll be growing our 12 beaver population up to about 50 before the end. A case could be made for delaying the dam, but that's a story for another time. And despite being asked to work 20 hours per day, our beavers have never been happier. In order to plant trees, we need a forester, which is our first researched item. While the beavers are busy cutting down all the natural tree growth, we designate some areas near the farmhouse for carrots, potatoes, and wheat. In hindsight, I planted way too much wheat and not quite enough potatoes. On day eight, we have sufficient science to research the forester so we can get started planting. Next in the research queue is stairs, which enable us to gather resources from the terrace above the district center, where we will build all the high power buildings later. First, we need to cut down all the trees up there for which we need stairs. Soon after the stairs are researched, the dam is nearing completion once it's finished, we can build gathering posts on the other side of the river to harvest chestnuts. We also now have two grills running, one each for chestnuts and potatoes. We also research the levee, which we will use to build a high efficiency power station below the dam. During cycle two, I noticed the lumber mill wasn't producing much power. This is because it's against a wall and most of the water flows around it. Placing a levee on the river side of the wheel helps inspire higher flow through the wheel. However, since there's no consistent power running the lumber mills, we can't produce the plank we need to build the stairs to allow the construction of the levee to help stabilize the power. So we build a hamster wheel to allow a beaver to drive it. Observant viewers will note, I could have avoided this by leaving the mill running earlier when I was making planks for the forester. After some time passes, our improvements are complete and power smoothly runs into the mill to start cranking out planks. We need to expand our housing to support the growing needs of industry. Rather than using up ground level space, we will build upward using a strip of platforms to support the path in front of the buildings. With a stable power source, we start building a gear workshop on cycle two, day 14. We also start building a large water tank while that's in progress, our focus shifts to laying out the power plant, which will drive our north industrial zone. Our loyal beavers have built out the canal to guide water through the, a network of power wheels. 
Now, we lay out the wheels themselves as well as the transmission line to carry shaft power up to the industrial area. While waiting for this all to build, I noticed I had forgotten to mark some of the maple trees for harvest, so my entire production was halted for a few hours when I ran out of wood. So I fixed that, and suddenly there was lots of wood again. So I built a campfire to celebrate. Also because it allegedly helps the beaver children grow up faster. More grown up beavers means more water, so we add another water pump. We're on a quest to turn out 16,000 science as quickly as possible. So we double the output by adding another inventor. By now, our north industrial area is receiving power and ready for buildings. We've accumulated a lot of wheat over the past few cycles and we're filling up the storage. The grist mill will slowly convert harvested wheat into flour for the bakery, which we build next. We need more and more planks. We remove two sections of shaft power transmission to place a lumber mill. We will do this two more times as we expand. We also build another gear workshop in the north area before researching metal scavenging. We start gathering metal in cycle four so we can have a chance to gather enough for the 300 metal blocks we need for the final monument. Despite 20 hour days, no monuments and only a single leisure building, our beaver population continues to experience record happiness. Our overly happy beavers are now rewarded with, you guessed it, more work. We double our science output again with two more inventor huts. Hours later, they're rewarded with even more work as the first smelter begins making metal blocks. Now things are moving really quickly as we prepare for powering the north industrial area during the dry season. We're going to add a hamster wheel for basic power needs and we'll expand it later. Next, our second smelter goes in. Our population is now approaching the final target of 50-ish, so we add the final water pump. We've reached our cruising state where we will add no further housing. Instead, we'll add more inventor huts and another large water tank. Again, despite oppressive work conditions, the beavers have never been happier. Again, we reward them with more responsibility. They've earned some hamster wheels, or as I like to call them, the Beaver Fitness Park. In many ways, it's much closer to a forced labor camp, but uh, hey, we're providing maple pastries and grilled chestnuts. It's oppressively delicious. Finally, all that hard work has paid off and our beavers have researched the observatory, which significantly increases science output. Just one observatory produces 250 science per day. With two observatories, we still need 32 days to produce all the science we need to research all three monuments. Just four short days after completing our first observatory, our first monument is ready to be built. And just one short day later, it's done. On cycle six, day two, we have our second observatory built. At this point, the only remaining buildings to be built are monuments and more power generation. To bolster power during the dry season, we add two small windmills. Each of these powers one of the observatories, leaving our fitness beavers to power the rest. Six days later and we have our second monument. Unsurprisingly, this has inspired our beavers to experience unprecedented happiness, jumping two levels in the same day. It's almost like they're aware of the excitement of this speed run. Two more gear workshops in cycle six will help produce the giant pile of resources we need to build the final monument. Just about the entire duration of cycle seven is devoted to making the science, gear, and metal blocks we need to finish the monument. And then on cycle seven, day 14, the residents of Rabbit Alley celebrate the completion of their final monument, bringing our speed run to an end after 131 total days. Thanks to the game designers for delivering a wonderful builder game with a fun theme. I, for one, will be playing a lot more Timberborn. Thanks to the players for keeping the community alive and active. And most importantly, thanks to you for watching. Stay hydrated, y'all.